This is where we used to live two years ago, and it was in Zone E, and that's not an evacuation zone. It's just three miles off the coast. The big block of land to the above is St. Pete College, and it's not an evacuation zone. But here you can see evac zone A, B, and C, and those are the ones you have to get out of and evacuate because of the storm surge. So it doesn't come inland like you think it does. It's just a couple miles, but that's where it's at. So it appears Hurricane Milton isn't going to be quite as devastating as we thought. Even though these hurricanes are geoengineered and initial estimates were that this was going to have wind gusts of 110 miles an hour. It appears that it is making landfall right now in the Treasure Island, St. Petersburg and Tampa area. And it will be bringing 45 mile an hour winds steady state with 75 mile an hour gusts and that's going to be from 10 o'clock tonight wednesday night into one o'clock tomorrow morning thursday morning but it appears that might be as strong as we see out of hurricane milton now you got to keep a couple things in mind right now one is the consistency of the land and it is sand over there so water goes through sand very quick now the focus is the storm surge and during Hurricane Ian two years ago, as I detailed on this channel, way down at the bottom, it was a Category 3 hurricane and brought very similar winds to the area. It shredded my umbrella, it did bring some trees down, but there wasn't like widespread devastation. The issue here is one, that storm surge, and you guys who have been through hurricanes will know you get zones. And right up on the coastline, you get Zone A, and it goes through about three miles inland to about zone D. I don't think there's a zone E from what I remember. Now, I've got a couple former co-workers from Dick Sporting Goods when I worked out there in the mall at St. Petersburg, and they lived in zone A, and they have relocated to a little bit further inland. There is no higher ground. Everything is right at below sea level out there, or right at sea level. But the difference with the devastation in North Carolina was that those people didn't have flood insurance, and a lot of those towns have rivers near them, so they flooded. And the ground is more of a clay-like um, soil, so it doesn't allow the water to seep down into the ground quite as quickly. Whereas you get the sand all in Tampa, all in St. Petersburg, and that water just goes straight through the ground normally. But we are looking at about eight to nine i think it's going to be closer to nine inches of rain in st petersburg and tampa so and that will fall in about inch increments every hour especially a little bit heavier during the hours of 10 to 1 at night tonight and right about now about two o'clock in the afternoon they're getting hit with about another inch of rain so it's going to be a total of about nine inches and that's still quite a lot of rain don't get me wrong so there will be some flooding, but it won't last that long. So it's not going to be quite as devastating. The, another problem you have to consider is the debris that's on the ground from Hurricane Helene. And that is making the rounds on social media right now. And at 75 mile an hour gusts, that debris that is on the ground from that hurricane is going to be picked up. Because these are the same areas that were hit from that hurricane. So it's going to be displaced. It could be driven into houses it could be driven into vehicles and cause some damage if people are out there it could cause some bodily harm it remains to be seen how large items will be that can be picked up from 75 mile an hour gusts but i don't expect the 110 mile an hour winds or the 165 mile an hour winds that it had when it was down at the yucatan peninsula that would have been massive chaos now some people are reporting cell phone outages already a little bit in the area so that's another thing to keep in mind i think a lot of people are choosing to hunker down just because they heard that it was going to be downgraded a little bit i've got three friends well, four friends in the area and they've all chosen to stay now we would have seen videos of people leaving and some panic and stuff that happens with every hurricane and I thought maybe this would be the same track over those mountainous towns in North Carolina because, of course, these are all geoengineered and steered. But it doesn't appear that the intensity or the bulk of the rain is going to hit that area. It's going to be coastal areas of South Carolina, 
maybe Fort Jackson, South Carolina in Columbia, where I was in the Army. They're probably going to get hit pretty hard from this, but it's going to drift out to the Atlantic Ocean, from what I can tell. But it is going to affect it. It's just not going to be a lot of rainfall in those other areas that I'm talking about. So I'm going to get on another video and talk about FEMA's response, which is absolutely horrid in those North Carolina areas. It's worse than you can possibly imagine at this point. But there's going to be a lot of information in that area in that video, and you're not going to want to miss it. So tune in for the next one for sure, because I'm going to talk about the Piedmont Corporation and go into detail on what's really going on. All right, until next video, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'll keep you updated on this hurricane. I'll try to get footage from some of the guys that are out there if I can. And until next time, Godspeed, everybody.